In the windswept kingdom of Ethel, nestled amidst towering mountains and icy glaciers, Queen Ravenna held absolute power. Her beauty, as breathtaking as the winter frost that clung to the kingdom's edges, hit a heart as cold as the glaciers themselves. Her only daughter, Princess Amara, was a stark contrast. With a smile brighter than the summer sun and a kindness that warmed even the chilliest hearts, Amara was adored by all who met her. Naturally, princes from far and wide flocked to Ethel, their eyes set on marrying the fair princess. However, Queen Ravenna, consumed by a bitter envy that gnawed at her soul, devised a cruel test for each suitor. These tasks were impossible feats, designed for failure and a swift execution. News of the Queen's twisted challenge reached Prince Corvus, heir to the humble but resourceful kingdom of Elios. Unlike the other princes, mesmerized solely by Amara's beauty, Corvus dreamt of a kingdom ruled by compassion, not fear. Despite his father's worried pleas, Corvus set off on his journey. His path led him through rolling hills and dense forests, each step taking him closer to Ethel and the unknown fate that awaited him. Along the dusty road, fate intervened. Corvus encountered a group of individuals unlike any he had ever met before. The first was Bartholomew, a portly fellow with a belly that seemed bottomless and a constant rumbling like distant thunder. His appetite was legendary, and his love for food knew no bounds. Next came Barnaby, a wiry man with one ear permanently pressed to the ground. People snickered, but Barnaby paid them no mind. He claimed he could hear the whispers of the earth, the secrets hidden beneath its surface. Then, Corvus met the towering twins, Leaf and Lars. They seemed to be made entirely of limbs, their arms stretching impossibly long, reaching for the highest branches and plucking fruits unseen by others. Finally, there was Edgar a man perpetually shrouded in a thick winter coat, even on the hottest days. He shivered constantly, complaining of the heat that others found unbearable. Corvus, a prince with a keen eye for talent, saw the potential in each of these peculiar individuals. He offered them a place in his retinue, promising them shelter, food, and a chance to prove their worth. Bartholomew, ever the foodie, readily agreed. Barnaby, eager to share his connection with the earth, joined with a grateful nod. The twins, Leaf and Lars, delighted at the prospect of using their extraordinary reach for a purpose, accepted with wide grins. Even Edgar, Lured by the promise of a warm meal and a chance to escape the constant scorching sun, in his mind, at least, agreed with a hesitant shiver. Together, this unlikely band continued their journey towards Ethel. The closer they got, the colder the air grew, a reflection of the icy heart that ruled the kingdom. Finally, they reached the imposing gates of Ethel's Grand Castle. Here, Corvus presented himself to the Queen, his heart pounding with a mixture of nervousness and determination. Queen Ravenna, upon seeing Corvus, couldn't help but be impressed by his noble bearing. However, her envy quickly flared fueled by the thought of losing her daughter's love and attention. With a cruel smile, 
she presented him with the first challenge. Deep within the churning river that ran beside the castle walls, she claimed, lay a magnificent sapphire jewel, lost by a careless maiden. Retrieve it for me before the sun set, she declared, and you may proceed. Fail, and the consequences will be dire. Barnaby, the man who listened to the earth, stepped forward. Closing his eyes, he pressed his ear to the ground, a frown creasing his brow as he concentrated. After a tense moment, his eyes snapped open. The jewel lies nestled beneath a large rock formation, just upstream, he announced with confidence. With Barnaby's guidance, Bartholomew, the bottomless pit of an eater, took center stage. He waddled to the river's edge and took a deep breath. Then, with a series of impressive gulps and swallows, he began to drink. The river level started to recede, revealing more and more of the riverbed with each mighty swallow. Soon, the large rock formation Barnaby mentioned was exposed. There, nestled in the damp mud, lay the sapphire jewel, sparkling defiantly. Bartholomew, overcome with pride at his contribution, belched loudly, a sound that echoed through the courtyard. Queen Ravenna, her initial amusement quickly turning into frustration, presented the next challenge. Thirty plump chickens await you in the kitchens, she declared to Corvus. Devour them all before noon, and you may continue. Fail, and your head will adorn the castle gates. This seemed an impossible feat, even for someone with Bartholomew's appetite. However, 